An American army is fighting for you. 1941, a date which will live. The note that the first atomic bomb was dropped on Hero. These forces met their mind. We have declared the war in peace. But we don't plan to surrender either. We are going to win. The portions and would lead to World War II. Allied air forces began an attack on military targets. that in the 21st century, the American... March 5th, 2052, the United States has officially closed. The United States will go ahead with a national quarantine. The new plague virus. Disaster swiftly Welcome, folks, to Fallout Tactics. Going to be doing a Let's Play of this game because, well, never done an RTS. Uh, yes, I will get rid of the uh, Fraps counter in the upper left corner by the next video. Sorry. <coughs> Hope that doesn't bother you too fucking much. Um, big reason I'm doing this is A, because this game is fucking awesome. B, if you look around a little bit on YouTube, you'll notice that Everybody else's Let's Play of this version sucks donkey balls. Uh, either they're 13 years old and sound like they're gay, or their video sucks, or their sound sucks, or all three. So I'm going to do a real Let's Play of this badass motherfucking game. squad-based combat comes to the Fallout universe. You are the wretched refuse. You may be born from dirt, but we will forge you into steel. You will learn to bend. If not, you will break. In these dark times, the Brotherhood, your Brotherhood, is all that stands between the rekindled flame of civilization and the howling, radiated wasteland. Your weapons will become more than your tools. They will become your friends. You will use your skills to inspire the lowly and protect the weak, whether they like it or not. Your squad mates will be more dear to you than your kin, and for those who survive, there will be honor, respect, and spoils of war. War. War never changes. It was the inevitable result of the path humanity had chosen. Everyone who entered into the conflict expected victory. Everyone was optimistic. But as the hostilities escalated, optimism faded, and society began to collapse. The great vaults were built to house the wealthy, the powerful, the influential, and those deemed necessary to their survival. Inside, resources and technology were stockpiled, a final defense against the coming Holocaust. With the past behind them and the present destroyed, they looked to the future. The sturdy Vault Zero was to be the nucleus of the Vault Network, housing the greatest leaders, artists, and scientists. The inhabitants of Vault Zero were to reunite the vaults and lead the people to a new life, a new world. But after the bombs, the world would be a harsh one. To ensure the creation of a post-nuclear utopia, the Vault Dwellers would need help. Machinery was constructed to tame a land hardened by the ravages of war, then tempered by nuclear winter. But plans were barely in place when the first missiles left the silos. 
During the destruction, communication between the vaults ceased. Entire vaults were lost. Those that survived were on their own. Not all vaults succumbed to the machinations of war. On North America's west coast, one group of military vault dwellers emerged almost unscathed. They surveyed the wasteland and squared their shoulders for the task ahead. These dedicated survivors salvaged the technology from the vaults, technology that was studied, replicated, and fiercely guarded. For they knew that while their power came from numbers, their future lay in scientific knowledge. In time, they formed the Brotherhood of Steel. The Brotherhood used their knowledge to drive back the atrocities of the wasteland, proclaiming themselves the technological saviors of mankind. They scoured the land in search of more technology, raiding mutant camps, bandit towns, and the broken remains of other vaults. But even they could not keep pace with the high tolls demanded by life in the wasteland. The Brotherhood found themselves at odds with their need for new blood versus their code of technological secrecy. The debate was lengthy. Finally, the elders ruled against sharing the technology with outsiders, convinced that they would endure as they had before. Further discussion was discouraged and the elders ordered the minority on a mission across the wastes. Super mutants, the foot soldiers of a conquered army, had been forced into a retreat across the mountainous barrier to the east. The Brotherhood constructed airships and dispatched the minority to track down and assess the extent of the remaining super mutant threat. But disaster struck while crossing the great mountains. A great storm gripped the main airship and flung it far from its course. The mighty ship was badly damaged. The smaller sections were torn from the main craft, never to be seen again. Many of the expedition's leaders were lost to the winds. The fraction of the crew that still survived struggled to keep their ship aloft before finally crashing on the outskirts of a once thriving metropolis, a city once called Chicago. Broken, scattered, and scarred, they took stock of the situation and once again squared their shoulders to the task ahead. The Brotherhood had much to offer the surrounding villages. They traded advanced medicines in exchange for food and labor. They traded protection from bandits in exchange for new recruits. In time, their ranks began to swell. Separated by distance and ideology from the main Brotherhood forces, the minority was free to forge a new Brotherhood of Steel, one that reflected the ideals they had strived for all along. However, one's future in the wasteland is never certain, for an old power has awakened, also bent on making this land its own. Life in the Brotherhood is about to change. So here we are at the main menu. I'm going to just make a quick whatever character. I'll probably redo him. I don't want to spend too much time here. We have the one-eyed, fat black man, pre-made character. And we have the mean looking badass rock and roll guy he looks like he can kick some major ass or at least play a mean electric guitar and of course the classic monochrome character creation screen here again this probably won't wind up being my actual character I'll probably actually use some traits here gifted fast shot something like that uh, but I'm just tinkering around here just to give you a minute to actually take a look at the screen here you can change your skin color hair color clothing highlights uh, the classic fallout skills are there the, the classic fallout traits and of course strength perception luck charisma endurance uh, 
uh, agility, all your classic stats here. Um, the nice thing about the gifted perk in this particular game is you get different guys on your team, so you don't necessarily need to spread yourself thin. I generally make a gun-toting bad motherfucker guy, and then I use the doctor, Stitch is his name, to heal. Uh, you get a sniper by the name of Farsight. She's a bad little bitch. And uh, so, really, you can focus on one thing if you want to be melee, go all out melee. Uh, if you want to be uh, ranged with the guns like I tend to do, I go high perception, agility. Uh, can't really remember too much about this game. It's been, well shit, since it came out back in uh, 2001. So I really haven't played this game in literally a decade. Or more. 11 years. So, uh... Can't remember if luck or charisma plays too great a part. I'm going to go ahead and, in my final base character, reduce the luck probably down to two. I uh, might even take a point away from charisma, and I'm going to really buff up strength, perception, intelligence, and agility. Because uh, I find those to be a lot uh, more important skills in this particular, this particular game. Now, in Fallout 1 and 2, yes, of course, you're going to want to have more charisma for dialogue options. Uh, this is a combat-based game, so let's fucking talk combat. Let's not let's not be fags and worry about how good we look. And once I'm done uh, putzing around here with my pre-made guy, or my custom-made pre-made guy, that won't be my guy at all probably. Uh, we will get into the fucking introduction. For the actual game. This video will cut out around the beginning of the first mission and I'll probably uh, be doing 15 to 30 minute videos after that. Um, I've had a really hard time trying to find a way to force this game into window mode so I'm running fraps in full screen mode. Uh, any ideas out there let me know. I tried Sizer and I've tried that DXNDW fucking program didn't work. I tried hyphen W after the command line. Couldn't force this game into Windows mode worth of shit. Don't know how other people did it, but maybe they did. But this will give us really high quality video. Hopefully I can squeeze this in under two gigs. Uh, right now the uh, five minute sections are coming in at around four gigs. So we definitely need to re-render this in Vegas Pro 9.0. Anyways, let's get this fucking show on the road. Enough fucking blabbering. Ten, huh? All right, you mutated redneck, green skin, sacks of irradiated flesh, listen up. I am Paladin Rychek. I am in charge of training you backward maggots in the art of war and survival. In my time in the Brotherhood, I have personally trained more than 50 initiates, and I am proud to say almost 14 of them are still alive and kicking. The elders have ordered me to mold you flabby, hip-slapping, berry-picking, rat-rubbing, brahmin kissers into capable warriors. And I am going to do it, even if it kills you. I will teach you how to eat, sleep, walk, talk, shoot, spit, like a Brotherhood soldier. First level of training will be recruitment detail. You'll go to the surrounding villages and see what able-bodied primates are ready for an honest life's work. It is your duty to remind the village elders that if they want continued protection from the scum of this world, they will uphold their end of the bargain by providing resources and their best and brightest for Brotherhood training. Now get your weak-kneed, superstitious, soft-skinned, uneducated bunch to the armory. You'll be issued basic weapons and armor. There are three simple rules to follow with Brotherhood equipment. If you damage your weapon, you will spend a week in the box. If you damage your armor, you will spend a week in the box. If you lose either, I'll kill you myself. And one final thing, ladies. Huh? Welcome to the Brotherhood of Steel. At ease, initiate. My name is General Barnicky. 
I will be giving you your orders before ever mission. But before that, I'd like to personally welcome you aboard. Considering that the Brotherhood basic training attrition rate is 85%, you should be very proud of yourself. Now, on to business. Two nights ago, raiders invaded the resource-rich tribal village of Brahminwood. Their losses have been heavy, and they are now ready to accept the Brotherhood's conditions for protection. We will return their lands and rescue these primitive people in exchange for food and a portion of their older children for new recruits. We must expand our ranks to meet our objectives, which makes every village count. I don't know what is driving the raiders this close to our base of operations, but they have been punishing the surrounding area. Brahminwood is one of many villages that is now occupied by raiders. The inhabitants that did not escape have been slain or imprisoned. Make no mistake, Initiate. They have killed a fair amount of our brothers. Do not underestimate them. You will take your squad to Brahminwood, locate and eliminate the leader of the group of raiders. Once he is removed, his followers will surely fall into disarray. You will then use the Brotherhood's superior might and intellect to butcher the remaining criminals. This is a standard assault mission, so consult the map in your Pip-Boy for the latest intelligence on the area. One more thing, warrior. You must ensure that the village elder survives. He is the key to our plans for this town. According to the local tribal custom, he alone deals with outsiders. Without him, we can have no agreement with the rest of the tribe. Dismissed. See you next video.